What is up guys, and as you probably know, we are no stranger to unboxings on the channel. We've done a fair few in our time, but what we have in this package over here is something a little bit more, it's something a little bit better, and I don't think we've ever had this many smartphones in one box. So let's get it open. Okay, so this box you're seeing right here was put together by Gearbest. This isn't a sponsored video, they haven't paid me to do this, but check them out, they are one of the more reliable Chinese retailers. And it is packed to the brim with their most interesting, most unusual smartphones and gadgetry. So I'm pretty excited. Opening it up reveals about two layers of products in there, all presented slightly differently. Some of them have external packagings on the outside, and some of them are just straight up there. And I think what we'll do in this video is save the smartphones till the end. These are going to be the most interesting, most unusual smartphones you've probably seen in a long time. So let's get all these products out and start with the other gadgets. Alright, we have got loads of stuff here, and just like you guys, I actually only have an idea of what is inside these boxes. So it's going to be a bit of a surprise to me as well. First things first, a notebook. But of course it doesn't end there, this is a smart notebook. Now what exactly that entails, I don't have a clue, but one of its key specifications is magic, so I'm very, very curious. It's a simple cardboard box, outslides the notebook, and attached to that is a pen included. It's got a fairly nice hard plastic finish. After writing for about a minute and a half on there, I'm quickly starting to realise what makes it so special. Whilst the ink can't be erased with your hand, a little bit of wet tissue and it comes straight off. And it goes better, because if you place this notebook in a microwave over a cup of water, it'll erase the entire thing. But it couldn't really be called a smart notebook if it didn't have an accompanying application. Thankfully, of course, it does, which allows you to scan the pages, it'll automatically detect the edges, and apply the so-called magic here, which uses the app's understanding of where the page lines are, and it kind of removes them. I wouldn't say this is revolutionary stuff, but it's a pretty unique and versatile notebook. Alright, a few more packages before we get onto the phones. This one does look suspiciously like a phone, but it is labelled as not one, so we'll see. Turns out this is something just as exciting. This is a $50 4K action camera. Now this is by the company Elephone, who are recently just starting to take themselves seriously in the smartphone market, so I'm pretty excited to test this one out. And in the second box, it literally has every accessory under the sky. This is really impressive and surprising for $50. The camera itself comes in a waterproof enclosure. I'll be very excited to take this for a spin. The next one is pretty fun, if you've been following the channel for a long time. And by long, I mean a really long time. You'll know I'm a pretty big advocate of KZ. This is a company that produced the ATE earphones, which were basically the best earphones for about $15 you could buy. And right here we have the KZ ZS6, a pair of much higher end earphones, which have removable, replaceable cables and a custom built driver. Not to mention the pretty striking visual design. So I spent about 25 minutes test driving the earphones, and safe to say I was every bit as impressed as I expected I was going to be. They are powerful, rich, bassy and detailed, more so than you'd expect given how much they are. Just a couple more packages before we get onto the phones, and here we have what appears to be some sort of bulb, perhaps a smart bulb like a Philips Hue replacement, but it turns out this is a humidifier. It comes with decorative stones which are meant to just place inside of it to stop it tipping over. And the setup is pretty simple, you just put the stones in, you pour some water in, and you plug it into either a battery bank or a mains. Tap a button and you're good to go. It's also got LEDs built inside of it so you can cycle the lights on the inside between white or seven different colours. I've never heard of this company, it's called Baugella from what I can read. And I've got no idea what's inside. I've been told it's not a phone, it's a bit too small to be anyway, so lifting that foam off reveals a watch. And this is actually a very surprising watch in terms of what it can do. It's got glow-in-the-dark hands, stainless steel construction, even a 30 meter water resistance. After taking off all the surrounding plastic, which <laughs> took a good 10 minutes, I actually think the watch looks really good. I think the colour scheme works together. Black and gold is a classic combination for a reason. Now, let's get started on the smartphones. And first up we have a mysterious looking grey package, which I gotta say, even after opening up, doesn't become much clearer. We've got this sort of glossy plastic material on the outside, which is quite an unusual finish for a smartphone box. And taking that off, we've got a matte white interior. The smartphone has a completely black, opaque screen protector on it, which is quite unusual. And underneath we have these full colour, what appears to be full Chinese manuals, one of which contains the SIM ejector tool. 
couple more sheets of paper and below that we've got a little package which contains the USB Type-C charging cable and another which contains an 18 watt fast charger which also supports Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0. Okay, this phone definitely lives up to the aim of the video. This is a very strange device through and through, but in most cases, in a good way. This is running Android, but it's so customized that it almost doesn't feel like it. Smart Sen has designed their own custom OS, and it is gorgeous. In terms of the animations, everything is fluid, everything has a certain bounce to it. But it's also purposeful, it's not only visually different from Android, but it's functionally too, and it's got a lot of little quirks in it, which can actually make your day-to-day -day life quite a bit easier. Even physically speaking, this device is a complete departure from everything we're used to. It has got the blocky sides of a Sony phone, but then the curved corners of something completely different. You've got a chrome rim running all the way around the sides of the phone, which gives your fingers a constant bit of texture to hold onto and some pretty out-the-box rounded buttons, which I think practicality-wise I'm a little bit less of a fan of. Smartphone package number two feels a little bit heavier duty, and sure enough inside we have a military protection case alongside the phone, which is the Ulephone Armor 2. I really like the packaging on that, that is something completely different to what you're probably used to. This protection pouch is 100% overkill for the purposes of protecting and carrying a phone, but how many times do you get something like that for free when you buy a device? The box feels pretty heavy duty, so it's no surprise here that the phone is about twice as heavy than ones we're used to. We'll get back to that in just a minute. And the box has a little bit of a OnePlus feel with the way the cable is presented, and also a micro USB to USB Type-C adapter, and surprisingly an 18 watt fast charger. It's also got a screwdriver, which I think we've never seen on a phone before, we'll find out why soon enough. Taking the plastic sleeve off and you quickly realise this is a different beast altogether. The Ulephone Armour 2 is what we have here and it looks unlike any phone I think I've ever seen before. We've got a screen protector which details all the things it is resistant to. This is one rugged, durable phone which makes the inclusion of that pouch almost ironic. So it turns out the screwdriver is to lock and unlock the SIM card compartment. This phone doesn't take waterproofing lightly. It's got a waterproof earpiece, waterproof Type-C port, waterproof speaker, camera, as well as buttons. But even aside from its durability, the Armour 2 is a surprisingly complete package. It's got a 4,700 mAh battery, fingerprint scanner, 6 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. It's got a 16 megapixel camera and even an octa-core Helio P25. On to the next phone, and this is in a smaller package but feels disconcertingly heavy given its size. Turns out this is the Mix 2, but not by Xiaomi, instead by Ugitel. As you might be aware, there are a lot of manufacturers who have tried to have a stab at Xiaomi's Mix formula. The idea being a maximum sized display, ideally 6 inches, in a body of a minimum sized phone. So far, the Ukitel Mix 2 looks like one of the better attempts. It's got a glass back, it's got an included silicon case, and some decent specifications all the way around. It's got a 4000 plus milliamp hour battery, but to my surprise, what took center stage here was the display. It's actually using in-cell display technology and looks almost as good as what I would say the OnePlus 5T's AMOLED panel looks like. It has got a Full HD Plus resolution and an 18 to 9 stretched aspect ratio. And a bit like the Armour 2, it's not a slouch in other departments. It's got an octa-core Helio P25, 6 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of ROM. But I would say if you decide not to use the case, the back of the phone does attract an annoying amount of fingerprints, but bear in mind this is made almost entirely out of glass, which gives it the same super premium feel of a phone like the Galaxy S9 Plus. Next up we've got a phone that is apparently from ZTE, which is exciting, this is a much larger corporation capable of investing more in the production of its phones and it's in the Nubia range. I quite like the design aesthetic here, it's very minimalist. It's got a boxy white exterior, but then with soft gold highlights all the way around. The company has also subtly introduced touches of red into the packaging. That's a really nice color combo. And underneath the phone, we've got a SIM ejector tool, a couple of manuals, and then the charging cable and charger. And it turns out this cable is actually a micro USB cable and the charger is a pretty slow 7.5 watt device. But that's totally fine because as it turns out this is the M2 Lite, one of ZTE's more budget oriented phones, which you wouldn't really have guessed by looking at it. Most budget phones, they tend to be a little bit tasteless, they tend to come with blander designs. This one has a lot of character. The red, gold and black together make this one of the most visually striking phones I think I've seen in quite a long time. Spec-wise it's not the most capable 
capable, but it's also barely over $100, and the focus here is on the selfie camera, which has got a 16 megapixel resolution, which is actually higher than the rear camera, which is 13. Following on from this, we've got the Verni X, which is the company's flagship phone. Underneath the device, we've got a pretty packed out box here. As well as the manuals, we've got a USB Type-C to headphone jack adapter. We've also got a screen protector, albeit only plastic, but also a case. And whilst this is still a silicon one, it's nice to see that it's got a little bit of character. To round the package off, there's a USB Type-C cable and an 18 watt fast charger. And to give you some perspective, the Galaxy S9 Plus charges with 15 watts. The screen of the phone is a 6 inch Full HD Plus panel. But unlike with the Ukitomix 2, I wouldn't say this is the highlight, this isn't the centre of attention here. What we're really here for is the 6200mAh battery, which can be fully charged in about 150 minutes. So guys, that is the giant unboxing. I really hope you enjoyed the video because this thing took me about three normal videos worth of time to film and edit. And if you did enjoy it and you've stuck around till the end, it would mean so much to me if you could smash that subscribe button. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.